let's talk about some joins that you won't see very often. And the reason you won't see these very often is they're just not used that often. So we're not going to spend too much time nailing down in which specific edge scenarios you may or may not use them. But just to give you an idea of what they do and what they are, it's important that we summarize the purpose and the outcome of both of these joins. So these join techniques just aren't used that often. It doesn't mean that they can't be used. And it doesn't mean you may not find the scenario in which you could use these. It is completely possible that you'll see these out in the wild. It's just not that common of a join in business cases. The first one that we're going to talk about is the cross join. Now the cross join creates a combination of every row with every other row. So if you had one, two, three, four, and you had one, two, you're basically going to create a table that is going to add every row from table B with every row from table A. We call this a Cartesian product. You may have seen this from math or somewhere else, but basically it's a combination of everything with everything. And when you combine everything with everything, what you're going to see is very, very, very large data sets. So let's take a look at that. Over here, we're in Valentino Studio. And let me create a table called Cartesian A. And in that table, we're going to put just an ID column as a number. And let's create a table Cartesian B that also has that. So let's execute these two commands. And now let's comment them out. So now what we want to do is we want to insert data into these. So if we do insert into Cartesian A, and we said values one, and let's do this a couple of times because we want a couple of values in here. Two, three, and now let's do this for Cartesian B. And let's say one and two, and let's execute these. Now we have our data in our tables. So let's go look at it. So if we select star from Cartesian A and we cross join Cartesian B, what are we going to see here? Well, we're going to see the following. We're going to see one to one, one to two, two to one, two to two, three to one, three to two. So we're cross joining every value from A with every value from B. And this is what we call a Cartesian product. We're creating every possible variation. And so if you have thousands and thousands and thousands of records, well, basically what you're going to see is that cross join of all of that data with all of that other data. Not so useful in scenarios where you have massive amounts of data, but there are use cases that you could come across. So now that we know that the cross join returns us the Cartesian product or the combination of every row with every other row, we know the use case for it. We know what it does and we know that it might not be as useful in most cases. The next one we're going to look at is the full outer join. Now we've looked at the left join and the right join. And what we know is that whether you do a left or a right, you're basically going to be returning the values that don't match from the right side or the left side of the join. What the full outer join does is it returns all the results from both sets, whether they match or not. So let's take a look at how that would work. Over here, we still have our Cartesian and we can use this to do a full join. So if we did a full join and we added an alias for B and we did a.id 
equal to b.id. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to join on one, two, and one and two. But what's going to happen? Well, we're going to return the values that don't match. In this case, we had three. But let's look at some more elaborate cases. So let's add some more data to our table so we can see what's actually going on. So we've inserted a bunch more data into our table. And if we now go and we do our full outer join again, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to see that everything that doesn't match is also returned. So we're creating a combination where we're saying, hey, if this matches our on statement, well then return me the match one and one and two and two match. Three doesn't have a match in table B, four doesn't have a match in table B, and five doesn't have a match in table B. And 20 doesn't have a match in table A, and 30 doesn't have a match in table A. So we're joining, but we're saying also return me all of the results that don't have matches, which creates more potential null values. Now, the reason this is less common is you may not find many scenarios where this data is useful to you. Most questions, a left join or a right join will answer for you. And so knowing that we know the less common joins that you may see, and there are even more joins out there. There are some database managers that implement joins that you won't see that often, but the ones we covered here are the most common, the most used, the most seen. And with those joins, you can accomplish the most value. And with that being said, we can now jump into some amazing exercises around joins. Join syntax is one of those things that we are going to use very, very often because a simple table only contains so much data. So we find ourselves joining data very often. And in what ways can we simplify the join syntax? Well, there are a couple of different strategies. And for the most part, I would suggest always sticking with the on keyword because you can mix and match and do complicated matches. But there is one case in which, hey, if we're doing a straight shoot of comparing primary key to foreign key from one table to the other, and both tables are having that same column, if you're comparing, for instance, employee number to employee number, well, then there's an easy way to write down that join and you don't need to use the on keyword and i wanted to give that to you in the cases where you're just doing a simple join exercise or whatever or trying to test something out so let's take a look at what that looks like so over here you can see that i'm selecting employee number first name and department number from employees and i'm joining department employee and as you can see over here i'm doing as de but I'm doing something else. I'm not doing the on keyword where I would do on de dot employee number equals e dot employee number, which would give me the same results. I'm basically saying, hey, Kiyoshi works for department three and Mary works for department nine, et cetera, et cetera. No, no, I was doing using. So using is saying, hey, I have this column in this table and this table. So, hey, just compare those, just do it for me, make it easy. When I execute that, what's basically going to happen is the same exact thing. Okay, so that simplifies us comparing a primary key to a foreign key relationship on a column that exists in both places. But I see you thinking, hey Mo, but what if I wanted to get the department name here? It's a good question. Let's see what that looks like. So if we did inner join here and we said, let's inner join departments as D and let's do the using. We know that based on our schema, department employee has a department number and departments has a department number. So could we just do department number? Well, let's see what happens when we do that. Because you told me using is like for the simple primary foreign key relationship. 
So let's execute that. Huh. Okay. Okay. So, what if I do D dot department name? So let's see. What is the department name? Depth name. So let's see what that's about. D dot department name. So if we execute this, what we'll see is, huh, interesting. So we're getting Murray working in customer service and Alain working in production, Moss working in production, Danelle working in development. Interesting. So the using keyword can be used to easily match primary to foreign key relationships. And that's a good thing. It makes it easy for us to say, hey, I'm just trying to compare this to this other thing. And the using keyword is one of those easy ways. Now, I would still suggest using the on keyword the majority of the time. It just makes it easier and I think more readable to know what's going on. And you can selectively say which tables you want to reference and there's less ambiguity there because as you get to more and more and more joins the using keyword can become confusing as you reference the table directly you know what you're trying to compare to what and as your joins become more complex you may get into weird situations with that said the using keyword is a very powerful keyword and you should always try to use it where you're doing simple joins. So it works the same exact way as the on keyword. And it just helps you clean up your code sometimes. Clean up your query. Awesome.